Pros cool. know who it's going to, but they can't stop him. On fourth and one, Bryant on the carry. Over 100 yards on just three carries. This one good for 45 and a touchdown. 14. What up, people? Back in the Boom Boom Room, man, with your host, me, Ron Slay, man, Mr. Boom Boom Room himself. We had an opportunity to lock the door, you know what I mean? And, you know, I reached, I reached in the bag, was able to get my bag of tricks, man, and pull out a great, man, pull out a legend. And this Boom Boom Room forum was, you know, it was brought up, you know, and, and, and set up so you can go through your journey. You know, people can take something from it. And everybody speak about, you know, their own journey, their own obstacles, their own bumps and rolls, how they bounce back. But hopefully at the end of it, whether you're a kid, whether you're an adult, uh, inspiring athlete, whatever it may be, lawyer, doctor, you can find so many because all of the stories all come back to sacrifice, perseverance, you know what I mean, things you had to go through, hey, you had to op uh, overcome things, it's obstacles that you got to overcome, man. And this right here, man, this guy right here, it's, 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 it's a good journey, man. And I, I ain't heard the story, so I'm going to be listening to y'all. I'm going to be listening to it just as he's giving it to me, you know what I mean? And hopefully y'all get some of it and y'all want to come back and ask questions. We bring them back for a part two. But who I got right here, man, is Southside legend, Nashville legend, Calvin Freeze Bryant, man. And I, let, but before we even get into it, like a lot of y'all, the old school listeners that I got in here, y'all remember Fridge, Refrigerator Perry. You know what I mean? And, and Fridge Red Pair was a lineman. Fridge, the Fridge, wasn't no lineman. This man, he was toting the rock. You know what I mean? So we're going to get into it, man. And I want to bring him into the Boom Boom Room right now, man. So y'all, y'all, y'all show some love for my guy, Refrigerator. Big Fridge, Calvin Fridge Bryant, man, coming into the Boom Boom Room. Fridge, what up, baby? I'm glad you could come in with us today. Man, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. What's up, y'all? Man, no doubt, no doubt, man. So let me do it right though. First, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know if you done heard this, so let me, let me, let me get it to you the right way. Ah, yes, <laughs> one man on his way here to the boom, boom, boom. The door is locked, Fridge. You are in the boom, boom room. That was brought to us by Frank Caliendo, my guy, comedian, actor. Y'all see him on TNT and everything, doing the voices. That was a little bit of Morgan Freeman, man. So, Fridge, you're in the boom, boom room. The door's locked. You can't get out, so you answer everything truthfully and honestly. Are you willing to do that? I am. That is. Let's get to it then, man. Fridge, let's start from the beginning, man. Give me a little bit about Fridge growing up. Give me a little bit of your background, your history, your story. Uh, I grew up in uh, South Nashville, a uh, two-parent household, uh, in Chill part of town, uh, Mama's boy, man, Danny. Danny was my hero, man. Got mm -hmm. two sisters, man. I, uh, I was named. My people out there probably wonder how I got the name Freeze, but I was born in 1986. My 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 dad was a big fan of the Chicago Bears. So after the the real refrigerator was drafted, my daddy playing with Tennessee State was too tall, and friends of Richard Danny got introduced to the Freeze early on. And, mm -hmm. Once he had me, he named me after him. So, you know what I mean? After they did a Super Bowl run, uh, uh, when I was born, I was named Freeze right after right after Refrigerator Pair. Now, hold up, Freeze. Let me let, <clears throat> let me pause you real quick because this is a uh, – I told the people before bringing you in, this is going to be a uh, <clears throat> – this is going to be interesting to me, you know what I mean, because I'm going to get to find out a lot of things that I never knew, you know what I mean? And that right there, what you just hit me with, your pops played the TSU, right? Right. So my pops played the TSU in that right. same era, you know what I mean, with Dent, with all them big John Merritt and all them. So our right. paths might have crossed, <laughs> you know what I mean, somewhere right. along, along in there, didn't even know it, you know what I mean, at the time. So, man, it, it's, it's funny, man, that what TSU was producing, you know what I mean, was equivalent to what the Alabamas and the Tennessees and everything was producing way back then. On, on right. the black on the black cultural side of it, you feel what I'm saying? So that's amazing alone. So go ahead, you know what I mean? I just had to throw that out there. So if y'all listening, y'all meet Dent, we're gonna get you in the boom boom room too. You know what I mean? Everybody, you know, we're gonna get everybody in there, but you know what right. I mean? TSU babies right here interviewing and, and the interviewee. So carry on. Okay, I became burned at home, man. I played football, man. That was like destined for me to do, man. Uh, Excel. 
Yeah. One of the best players in the city as a youth football player. Um, but I, I kind of got to the point where I was bigger than all the other kids. So, you know, a weight limit came in. Yeah. So, you know, I kept kept playing on up until I got like the junior high man and I could run the football because there wasn't no weight limit. Right. That's when my story just really started to take off around the city. I was one of the biggest running backs in the city, but I just wasn't just a big back. Yeah. I, I could do things with the ball. You feel what I'm saying? So, as my name got bigger and bigger, I became the best player in my age group and uh, junior high football. And I eventually followed my dad uh, and went to Hillsborough High School. And that, was, that was big for my community because at the time, my whole community was on for Glencliff. And that's when the Glencliff coach had they run to the state championship and things like that around the pearl. So I made my decision to go to Hillsborough. And that was a big decision I made. Now tell me this, Rich. Uh, talk about the part of town you grew up in, um, South Nashville. Now, for the listeners that are not familiar with it, it's two parts of South. Nashville is a small city, but it's growing now. It's not what everybody sees, what they see right now. At this time, you know what I mean? You had East Nashville, you had different parts of East Nashville, you know what I mean? You had West Nashville, you had North Nashville. Then you had South Nashville separated by two parts. What part of South Nashville were you from? I was from the Edgefield part. We uh we separated to uh, J C Napier University Court. That's on one part, and then Edgefield is on the other part. I came from the other part. Was football was football your Repeat first love, Fridge? What was you saying? Was football my first sport? Yeah. Was that your first love? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. I'm a football player from the from the ground up. Football yeah. player. All right, I ask you that because I know on y'all side in Edge Hill, man, there's a lot of baseball that go on over there, you know what I mean? And I never really got into that, you know what I mean? I was basketball, football myself, but I used to always hear about, man, they cold over there, baseball out south, you know what I mean? So I was just seeing, you know, if, if, if that was something that you tried to you tried to pick up also, or you just stuck with strictly football and running people over. No, no, I played baseball as well. You know, okay. it, 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 was, it was one thing like in the community, Community center, everybody played baseball. So, yeah. you know, I feel like it was something I could have probably went a little further in, but you know, I, once we get our mindset on one sport, you it know, we're going to go with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, let me ask you this. Some of the people that inspired you, you talk about your pops, you know what I mean? Um, I can see that you, you took a trend to, took a liking of the football, but some of the other people that inspired you, maybe whether it be people at the center, people in your neighborhood, teachers, you know what I mean? Who are some of the people that you know, I mean, you leaned on and was like, "Damn, okay, I, I, I can, I can take something from this right here." They want to see me do, they want to see me do positive, see me do good. Who were some of those people in your life growing up? Before we man, get to high up, school, like my, my dad, man, played a major role. Everybody know that, man, from training to mm -hmm. just uh, giving me the knowledge of the sport. The people, that he, my, my cousin was Q Ball Brian. He ran the uh, community center out yeah. south, so. You know, it got me in the sport early. I played for Wayne Bell, my board. I was that whole community was big in my uh in the, my upbringing. And uh, as I got older, man, I played under legendary Coach Cruz and Apollo. Man, I was one of them guys that I did a lot of special transferring to get where I need to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, even with living out south in the projects, the coach made sure I made it to Antioch to play for Apollo, and I made a big impact on it. You know, back in the day, we had to get special transfers yeah. and things like that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I always put myself in the right position, and, and it really paid off, man. But, like, seeing the, the, the Santonio Beard, the mm -hmm. C.J. Scott, the mm -hmm. Don Henderson, I, I became a, a sport, uh, a fan of the sport, man. Yeah. Coach Gillum played a big part in my life as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like if Coach Gillum wouldn't have left Burrow home, that's where I would have went to. But when he left for a call to move to New York, it put me in a position that, you know what I mean, I, I went and went to Hillsborough. Like, right. the coach, coach Fitzgerald, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I played homage to all of them, man. Right. I mean, I my game and those state championship team from Pearl. And uh, they played a big part of my life, even though they didn't really know they were doing it at the time. Right. So you get ready to go to Hillsborough. When you went yeah. into that decision, you had opportunities to go other places, but you went to Hillsborough. You first walk in. Any butterflies? Are you ready to get straight to work, straight to the field, and, and and let's get it on? You know what I mean? You making your stamp. Talk about the teams before you or the teams that you was walking into at Hillsborough. Well, at this, at this time, our special transfer to Hillsborough was supposed to be in Glen Club. So when I get to Hillsborough, they weren't used to kids 
from the project to really being at that school mm -hmm. and being part of their program. So I went through the whole summer with them in practice. And as soon as I got there, I made myself known that I got to compete at a level on the varsity level. Right. But the thing that I liked about Hillsburg was structure that I didn't just have to be thrown in the fire. They had structure. They were coming out for nine to three seasons, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, it got beat up by White Creek in the playoffs and dominated. So, you know, they had made it to the second round of the playoffs. I think that's part of They had made it in school history. Yeah. So it was a lot to prove with us coming up there, especially the way Big Amar and them pumped them out in the playoffs. So <laughs> I knew they all left, so we was eager to get started and uh, build a dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. So that name right there, we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, but White's Creek seems to keep coming up in your career. And, and when I say dominant games, I mean dominant games. So I did a little, a little fact checking, a little history, a little history right. checking, went through the archives, man. Some of the performances that you was putting up against White Creek, White's Creek, it, 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 that, that was on their side embarrassing and on your side yeah. a mark. You know what I mean? An imprint, an impact on the game. So, you know what I mean? But before then, freshman year, freshman year in Hillsboro, you step in there, what's your role? I played Boston. They didn't allow me to play freshman unless they had a big game. So, yeah. all my time was playing on Boston, learning the program, and learning the things. But the big thing about my freshman year was, was a trip. Was my first game was just making it. Yeah. Uh, we had jumped out on the pretty good. My first high school carry was a touchdown. I still got the article. <laughs> yeah. I was a freshman. That game, I had three carries for 103 yards. I'm going to shoot you the article. So, you know, that really just paid the way for my freshman year. But I put really just coming in, hearing that he touches, and a lot of our games and blowouts, I got a lot of PT. Fridge, if you tell somebody them numbers, they would think you got a cheat code somehow, or somebody's in the stands with a controller. Right. Three carries, hundred three yards. So, so people that's at, people that's at home listening, check it out. Don't even trip. I'm gonna put it up. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna go in my archives. I'm gonna put it up there so y'all can see documentation of what my man is telling y'all. So, yeah, three for one hundred three. You get into it. So is the ball yours on the varsity team automatically? Can you Say it again, bro. Is the is the ball yours automatically on the varsity team when you step into it? You automatically get the ball in your hands. Yeah, I mean, I had a guy first about that, but Adam, if I used to miss a football or uh, what? Mm -hmm. Then I had another guy named uh, Brian Price, he was a home, he was a white, a white mm -hmm. guy, fullback. So, so you know, we played our role like like the coach used to tell me, man, like, like I don't roll these horses this whole time. I just can't. Charge you on boxes. I understood it was more like about waiting your turn. Right. We had that kind of like Alabama feel you know, for back, so we knew everybody the way we run the wing team for everybody got to eat. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, just when I got the ball, I'm, I'm trying to score every time I, I touch the ball. So, so, yeah, no doubt. So, tell me what your relationship was like with Coach A Lot. Oh man, he, he was great, man. I mean, he was a real big on discipline. Mm -hmm. And he made me earn everything I got. He made all of us earn everything we got. And uh, it became like, man, we had like one of the closest relationships even to this day, man. Even when I went through my situation, he wanted my character with me. You know what I'm saying? It's just like how close me and everybody was. And I, he did that a lot. And, um, I, and for you people listening, man, Coach A Lot is um, he's a white guy. You know what I mean? Um, and you coming from the inner city, from the projects coming to Hillsboro where they're not used to seeing people like you, you know what I mean, with a dominant presence and an impact on the field at the same time, and a leader at the same time. Because a lot of times, kids can be put in situations, man, where they don't understand their leader or follower. You know what I mean? Right. You seem to understand that right off that you are a leader, even though you were stepping in as an underclass. Right. So that's big time, you know what I mean? What, what mentally, what space were you in? If you can explain and think back, what space were you in mentally to know that, you know what I mean, I I got a voice, you know what I mean? And if, if something's going wrong, like I can say something and it won't be looked at as, man, what dude talking about? But they'll listen, you know what I mean? 
always I always go by the saying that uh, great leaders was also great followers. You know what I'm saying? And I followed the right thing. So when I learned the, the program and how it was going, I was going to, I, I followed the lead. I never tried to stop the step by boundaries. I just led by example, which really earned me the leadership on the team, even as an underclass. Right. They respected what I had going on. But I was like, bro, I was a natural born uh, winner. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I come to, I came to win. I ain't come to play. Right. I came to win, and you know what I mean? It, it really paid off, and I feel like I brought a certain killer instinct to the, to the environment. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We're in the middle of Green Hills, and you know, yeah. I'm coming from the mud. So, yeah. you know, what I want to do is bring that mentality to the field. Right. You can have some KI out there. Right. Instinct. Yeah, ain't no doubt about it. A lot of people don't understand what that is. You know what I mean? We got to get that right. We got to get that to these kids today, man. So. Tell me this. Um, you talked about one of the names, Brian Price. Tell me these right. names, what they mean to you. Brian Price, Chris Russell, Chris Tabling. Is that is it Tabling? Tabling? Tabling, yeah. Tabling. Tell me what them names mean to you if I, if I mention them to you. Man, they, I went to war with them, man. You know what yeah. I mean? Brian Price was a, was a white kid and Chris Tabling was a white kid. Mm-hmm. At this point, I hadn't really played with too many white boys. I'm talking about when you speak of white boys that had that dog in them. Right. You got to mention them guys. And Chris Russell was like the the D1 example. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because he was like a 6'3", 185-pound corner. He ran a 4'4". Yeah. And all the college scouts. Now, I remember people like Lou Holtz, Philip Ford, but they was crazy about this dude. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? He was yeah. clean cut, had good grades. He already had ACT scores, so mm-hmm. you know he was—he was a good example. But he was also down to earth. Yeah. See, I asked that man so people can get an understanding of what kind of school you had, what kind of program you had around you that it wasn't just right. you. You know what I'm saying? So, looking looking at now, you going forward. What year um, was it that you just you were on the map? You know what I mean? You had solidified yourself. This is no longer junior pro, middle school, none of that. You in high school and. Man, when people mention football in Nashville, Tennessee, Davidson County, right. and it's not like it was, it's not like it is now. You know what I mean? No. Where it's all the private schools got all the juice and you know the surrounding counties like Murfreesboro and stuff like that got all the players. Everything, if you were a player, you were right here in Davidson right. County. You know what right. I'm saying? You were trying to get here if you wasn't here. So right. your name was mentioned with the greats coming along right, right there. When did you know? That you had arrived. I mean, my, I, I arrived pretty early, but I'll give you an example. Like, mm-hmm. we had a great season my freshman year. Right. So we had the football winners. We had a big senior class. So, you know, yeah, I had about five, ten touchdowns, played great defense. But, you know, like, we had a good squad. So, you know, they looked at us as a good squad. Now, my sophomore year, which was the best squad we ever had while I was there, mm-hmm. started on defense, and I set the tone early. Like in the trenches, letting people know, like they didn't, they were used to seeing like a 270 pound running back <laughs> being play both sides of the ball, yeah. so the defense was down the line back on defense, yeah, special teams and all that. So when they really started surfacing, like man, we got to deal with this dude for three more years, right. man, it's gonna be a real problem. So right. then I had guys besides me, like for my sophomore year, Walter Fisher, which he'll probably be, you probably break them on mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This guy won the MVP of the state championship game. So we had a sophomore class that was like coming out freshman city champs. We, we proved early that this is our city. And we yeah. What that nobody could do about it. Yeah, and, and see, growing up, that was um that was a big part. Like to be able to walk around and people know who you are because of your sport and everything. Yeah. Like you see them letterman jackets and things like that. It, it mean a little something different. You know what I mean? Yeah, so right. that, that that's good to know. Your junior year, you're going into your junior year. Talk about this year. Talk about these state championship runs. And and before I jump the gun on anything, you didn't get to participate in. Oh, uh, uh, my senior year. Your yeah, senior I didn't get year. To in my senior, senior year. year. Senior year. Okay. So uh, these state championship runs, man. You know, uh, we made it to we were thirteen and one my freshman year. Mm-hmm. Game before the championship, went down to Memphis. We got beat up pretty good by Memphis East. They they had like a great squad. Right. So at this time, uh, Ron, we not we not we now we sophomore. Yeah. We make it to the state championship. Fourteen and mm-hmm. zero, make the state championship. 
we wasn't really big on Barrysville, we were just hearing about it. Right. So when we get there, <laughs> it's like he was kind of happy to be there, man. We, yeah. We, that you know, we lost by a touchdown. I just feel like we were just happy to be in the environment. Mm-hmm. Now my junior year, it was personal. Yeah. So I made a big impact in the city, uh, statewide. We was number one in the we was number one in the state all year long. Mm-hmm. Number two was Fairfield right behind us. I don't right. know if they took it to disrespect or what, you know what I mean? But <laughs> we got to the game we wanted, man, in the state championship. I made my I made my way early in the game, man. We got up twenty six to fourteen to run, man. Mm-hmm. And we just knew that it was our game. It's a wrap. Yeah. Finished left the, uh, in the fourth quarter. We up twenty six fourteen. And man, they just trick played us to death, man. The experience just kicked in, man. <laughs> You know, you've been up that way. You know yeah. how Aaron Bill feels, man. They're <laughs> yeah. champions, man. Yes. Yes. They stole the, they, they came back and got the game from us, man. We lost 26-29. So now, man, this three years straight, and we like deep in the playoffs and we playoff run. Mm-hmm. Each year, man, we break it more barriers. Like I said, when I first came, they never made the best second round. Right. Now they made it to the, the fourth round. Then we got state championship runoff, state championship runoff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's tough right there, man. That's tough to do. Yeah. That's something to stand on. Now let me tell you, let me tell the listeners, man, a couple of these numbers, man. Mind you, this is numbers where you sharing the ball in the backfield. Right. Junior year, eleven hundred plus yards on nineteen touchdowns. That sound yeah. accurate. That sounds yeah. pretty accurate. Okay. Senior year, fifteen sixty, twenty two touchdowns in fourteen games. Now for right. years, it's a lot of people, man. Those junior year numbers would die to have them numbers in middle school. You right. feel what I'm saying? With with your size. You play both ways. Both, both ways. Yeah. Both ways. Did you tell me what your thought process was coming into coming into seasons? Like, you know what I mean? Me personally, I never had um I never had really individual goals. I was just kind of running out there with talent. You know what I mean? Like, man, any opportunity that I get, I'm finna make right. the most of it. I'm gonna do what I can, you know what I mean? And hopefully yeah. they'll never take me off the floor. You know what I mean? And then my right. senior year, when I went to Oak Hill, I kind of started being able to put things in perspective. Like, man, I need to do this in order for us to win. I right. start understanding about pecking orders and things like that. So I was able to get some goals, you know what I mean? And come into it, come into it with. But Tell me what your thought process was, because you don't just get the ball and just 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 go run it like this, like this, like you you run it with a purpose. If you do, if you're doing this right, right. you putting these type of numbers. So what was your mind frame? Man, my mind frame was every every year to show that I was the best player in the state of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. That, that was my mind frame, right? It was defense, offense. I wanted to be that. Sometimes I take things as like personal. I'm mm-hmm. telling you what happened to me my junior year. Mm-hmm. And a great year I had, we went up to Memphis Mail Rose and always Mile. A lot mm-hmm. of my guys went there. I met a lot. We went to war with them, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. We ended up escaping up there. They had like Cedric Wilson, that little brother. Yeah. They had Joseph Dawes. They had a lot of people that played D1 football. So yeah. it was like we played in the middle of the project, man. You know how it is. Then they're throwing them so, holes in. Uh, you can't stop yeah. this funk. This yeah. orange mouth funk. Man, we got up out of there seven to six, man. <laughs> so you know it was personal, but at the end of the game, man, <laughs> I never fumbled, bro. It's just something I don't do. Right. We were, we were stalling the clock, man, and I had the ball, and I was trying to get extra yards, and, and the rap, I feel like the rap didn't blow the whistle that time. They stood me up, mm-hmm. and they came and crushed the ball out, bro, and I fumbled. So we gave up the possession. They get the ball, and it was close to their end zone, kind of. So we ended up getting up out of that, man. So that summer, my inspiration was like, my senior year, I ain't going to fumble at all. Right. So right. it was like more personal. Like, I didn't fumble my senior year either. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's just like an example. Like, man, I took things personal, mm-hmm. man. But I think the thing that was my biggest blow, man, that I look back on, mm-hmm. it's like, Hillsborough wasn't used to winning. Right. At that, at that level. Coach Adelot then wasn't used to having D one prospects like that. Mm-hmm. So the business that we should have been having, we right. took all these letters from Michigan, Tennessee. We went to Tennessee. 
of course, that was down the street, but I'm talking about the Michigan, the Auburn, the Oregon, the yeah. Colorado. We getting offers, we get we getting like come visit us, offer us tickets and everything. And bro, when I tell you, bro, we did not take one visit wow. to none of them schools because it wasn't nobody ahead of us that really telling us like, look, bro, sometimes they just don't come find you. Sometimes mm-hmm. you gotta go find them. When they got when they got the hour, you bro, you gotta take that extra step and stop going to down the street to watch this game on Saturday and get on that plane and go right. watch some real football. So at this point, bro, it's like junior year, bro. And our head and our our head folks on our team still hadn't took ACT. It's crazy. Until Coach Fisher came along. And this is why I got so much respect for Coach Fisher at first, even though he seen that we was a rival to him at that time, he told Coach A lot about the the ACT prep school, mm-hmm. class at Brickwood, the Jolly Yep, yep. I and took the same got thing. going out there. But by that time, as you know, our core GPAs ain't really lining up to what we need to do. So we find it out like in the middle of our high school career, well, at the end of our high school career, that we didn't know nothing about clearing house. Hey, man. I mean, we was doing something that, that the city hadn't seen since y'all. Mm-hmm. So look, y'all had Coach Fitzgerald. And play, uh, give them the people like that. We didn't just really have the people that had the knowledge of that right, right at that time. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, Alvin Fighter went to MTSU. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, if it wasn't for like, people like Joe Sanders and Chris Russell going to where they went to, we just started really falling in left. No caps or nothing, bro. We put up them numbers with no caps. That's crazy. No business. Yeah. We wasn't. We wasn't it wasn't hip to it. We were just kicking ass and ass. Yeah. Place, yeah. Right? yeah. Kick ass, take names. See, and that's the, the funny thing, man. What I always explain when I go speak to uh, kids or groups, man, what you don't understand is not only are we in the inner city, so we behind, but now we're in the public school system. And at that time, man, listen, it, and I ain't saying that there ain't a lot of teachers out there that care or anything, but man, one, they don't get paid like they supposed to, you know what I mean? Where they can put the time and effort into it, where they, gotta, they ain't gotta go pick up a second job or do whatever or tutor or do stuff like that. But on top of that, Man, we didn't have nobody really to show us the ropes if you wasn't that that guy. You know what I mean? Like John Henderson was different. I mean, he right. he's, he's an anomaly. You know what I mean? One in one in a lifetime. But outside of that, you got other great players, man. When I went to Oak Hill, see, I went to Oak Hill not only for the competition to play on the national level, but because of my grades. Like, if I don't go to Oak Hill, I don't get, I don't, I don't qualify. Not not my first year. You know what I mean? It ain't no question. So I get up there, and we were talking about core GPA. You 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 made me uh, think about it when you said the core GPAs. <clears throat> and she was like, hold up. You just got with, with Oak Hill. Yeah, so when we, when we get up to uh, Oak Hill, I didn't know anything about core grades, and when you just said it, that reminded me, man. So we get <laughs> we get up there, and uh, <laughs> Miss Smith, Coach Smith's wife, she pulled, I got to go to summer school, and I got to go Monday through Saturday. Eight hours a day, four hours on Saturday. So man, I'm about by myself. It ain't about ten kids going to summer school. I'm frustrated. I'm like, man, I'm supposed to be at Nike camp, Deedee's camp, all these camps. Miss Smith pulled me to the side. She's like, "Do you understand what your core GPA is?" I'm like, "What are you talking about, core GPA, man? I know I'm trying to get B's, and if I get a if I get a D in something, I'm gonna try to get a, C, a, a, a A or something that's offset it." Or something like that, and I'm cool. So I might go get a, a D in math, come back, I'm gonna get an A in PE. So that's gonna equal out to be about a C plus, you know what I mean? I'm thinking that's how it goes. She's like, no, nah, your cores, your classes that that really count, you know what I mean? PE and all that's electives. I'm like, dude, I ain't got no idea what this is. So right. man, that was one of the reasons that um I really went to Oak Hill for sure. Uh for uh uh, also, man, because if I don't go there, I don't get eligible, and ain't no telling what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? You fall through the cracks, and ain't, ain't no telling. I, I can't wait to get Jamon on here, also, to hear what Jamon, you know what I mean? Idea was, uh, yeah. was, you know what I mean? So, I know all of us yeah. went through that, man. And ACT when I got up there, but I, I will say, being over at Pearl with Coach Fitzgerald and them, and how they set the ACT up, we were taking it our freshman year, even unconsciously. We in there taking it on Saturdays, not knowing what we're doing, but it's it's grooming us for us. Right. So by the time I got to Oak Hill and took it, I passed it on the first try. You know what I mean? So I ended up with a 19, right. 
just because I knew how to take it. You know what I mean? Not knowing all the answers, right. but I just knew a method to it. So, yeah, man, that's important, man. And I, I tell them kids that all the time, man, if, it was, if I could do one thing to make it easier, I would have went back at least. I ain't saying my freshman year I'm going to come in and be on the honor roll or nothing, but I right. just would have took it a little bit more serious. You know what I mean? Turned in more than half of my homework. You know what I mean? Paying attention a little bit because it make it easier when you're a senior. You know what I mean? You ain't you ain't going no, through this. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Then, like you right. said, you can jump on the planes and go to Michigan and you can miss school because, shit, you got all your grades. You don't need to be in school. Right. You know what I mean? So, and that's a big thing, man. So, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up, man. Now, going into your um, <clears throat> your senior year, what was your what was your list like? What was your thoughts like as far as man? I, I'm I, I want to go to school, you know what I mean? I want to go to college and play. What well, you, you you tell me? Tell me your mind frame going into this this senior year. Well, senior year I was constantly in, in contact with uh, Tennessee on yeah. the regular, Ole Miss, and um, I kind of like staying at SEC right, but but Colorado showed me a lot of love and Oregon. Uh, and then at that time, you know. Oregon wasn't the Oregon they are today or right. what it was when it was hot, but you know, it was something different, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I had my little list together on what I wanted to do, and all I had to do was just finish strong, basically. You see what I'm saying? And, and I ended up having, like, nice things You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Nice things. Yeah. So your choices came down to who? Who were your choices before deciding to go to TSU? Man, it was like Tennessee, uh, mm-hmm. Michigan, Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I say Colorado because how much they, they stayed so in touch with me like, through yeah. Joe and Chris and all that. So you decided one to thing go. I learned, one thing I learned though, Ron, was this, man. Like, not to jump the gun a little bit, but like, we, I know for a fact we was the top, some of the top players probably in the country. Right. But we had a thing called Rivals.com then. So oh. that was the big circuit rivals.com we didn't go to none of their camp we didn't do none of that we was just on that maybe two stars they mm-hmm. probably gave us maybe two stars mm-hmm. right like i tell players like sometimes just like you're not stepping out there you're cheating yourself so yep. what ended up happening was making us know how to do really work we had two stars so my partner walter fisher would have come up a lot he played a big role in my yep. life you know what i mean i played a big role in his life he goes to juco in kansas yep. before he goes to tennessee that was mm-hmm. kansas juco coffee after two weeks, the man was a five-star player, the number one Juco player in the country. Yeah. <laughs> so we looking at it like, damn, man, we really sold ourselves short, man. Like, it took for him to go to Juco to really get his true worth of what he was really doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And by us not knowing, like, hey, damn, I'm going to keep it real. People talk Juco, people just look at it like, oh, man, nah. Yeah. Really, what we do, we was really missing. And we look at all these Juco players, they really accomplished what they needed to accomplish. Yeah. Yep. He gave my extra shot to know what was going on and pick a school and do what they needed to do. So, you know, going in, I had a lot of buzz, but it could have been better my city right. if I had the right mentor in front of me to be like, look, man, right. don't look down on this, don't turn your back on that. And like, you know, I ended up breaking my ankle, man. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. now, all the work that I didn't put in on the level that I didn't know, they ain't come back to hunt me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Now the schools tell me, like, well, we, we want to offer you, but we know it's somebody in the country without a broke ankle is just as good as you. Yep. So, so now you get going to that, and that reality really sinking in, like, man. Yeah. Damn. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So what what did you feel when you broke that ankle? Did you know it was broken right away when you broke your ankle? I walked off the field. I stayed down for a minute, man. I yeah. kind of got hit lower, and one person hit me high. And we were right there down there by the end zone. I remember my teammates just telling me, man, get up. Get up, yeah. get up, get up, get up. I'm like, man, I can't. But when I did get up, I was already spatted. You know, we get that from right. the prayer, man. Yeah. We all spat. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? So yeah. I kept hearing something pop as I was walking off the sideline. So when they got to really looking at what was going on with me, they found out that I had a broke ankle. Yeah. Damn. So I'm trying to tape it up and go back in. Like, maybe they just exaggerate. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a game before the state championship, my city is here. Now, I know I ain't going out like this. Being mm-hmm. a broke ankle, man. And, Cause me to sit out. So, yeah. y'all, y'all go on for the state ship, say, uh, state championship. End up right. run up. Y'all was run up that year, right? Now we won it. Uh, y'all won it that year when you was out. Yeah. Okay. So this, this is this is what I want to know. At that time, when you go through an injury like that, what are you thinking? 
Like, are you too young at that point to know, like, what's going on with it? Are you just going with life? You know what I mean? Because I, I, I remember, like, I only had, I had a bad injury like that my sophomore year, but um, I broke my wrist. When I broke my wrist, um, I ain't really think too much. I was, and I was a sophomore, so I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to heal up. I'm going to bounce right back. I'm going to get ready for basketball season. Yours is a little different. You know what I mean? What, what was going on with yours? Man, I, I really had the same mind frame you had, man. I think I'm going to heal up, man. I'm going to pick a school. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be all right. I'm still going to do what I need to do. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But reality hit in when I started talking to the college coaches that was really interested in me and wanted me to come to their school. And then one day I was thinking about the University of Tennessee. And like the, the recruiting coach told me, like, we just feel like it's somebody in the nation just as good as you without yeah. a broke ankle. Yeah. And they let me put like the business part of things. Oh, like, wow. these people are really recruit nationwide. It ain't about you, man. And yeah. they get somebody that's as good as you to fill in the spot that you was going to have. You feel what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, the ladder start listening up, the engine start listening up because they look at it too, bro. I'm a 270 pound running back. Exactly. So, with a broke wheel, you know what I mean? Yeah. They look at it like, all right, what's the chance of him coming back? Right. Full strength the way he was, you feel what I'm saying? So some people wanted me for defense, like Colorado still, Alpha was still lingering in the air, but mm -hmm. what really got me, bro, is like I was sitting at home with a broke ankle, going without a million things going through my mind, and I didn't knock on the door, man, and it's uh, Coach James Reese and his whole coaching staff from PSU. That's real. So, so we in the middle of the project, man. Those folks out there in uniform, I mean, they my door, I'm like, yeah. man, I got a broke ankle, I'm like, Man, that's loyalty right there. Mm -hmm. So it was no brainer with me. I'm like, man, I need to go ahead and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Take this shot. Because only too many times when the whole coach staff comes to a key house with a broke ankle. Right. That's how important it was to them to make sure that they locked me in. So I ended up locking me in the Tennessee State University. So you signed, you signed, you, you come a long way, Fred. You signed to go to Tennessee State University. Right. That's, um, What's the process? What's the process of you doing your rehab, trying to get on the field for Tennessee State? How is that going? Man, at that point, man, they had Charles Anthony. He was probably the best running back in the in the in the, in the country mm -hmm. in, uh, in, uh, in that division. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? So you know, the whole plan was for me to get up there to block for him. You know what I mean? And make room for him my freshman year. So what comes back to hungry is what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Core GPA and mm -hmm. things like that. So I ended up there at the Prop 48 system then. You know, yep. what Big Con went under in Tennessee. Yep. So I basically went to school. I trained, got back. So I feel like we're close to 100% trained. And I had to sit out a year, but I had to keep the grade in case to be eligible for the following year. Right. So I accomplished that. And then finally, when it was my time to hit the field, bro, what happens to a lot of people is it was the coaches thing. So they bring in a, they, they fired the whole coaching staff that came, well, the majority of them that came to my career, and bring in a guy named James Well. Yeah. yeah. James go down the hill, you know, go to his play. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Right. So you got them coaches, and I don't think people understand how important, I'm talking about from how important your resources are, resources are around you, man. Like you was just talking earlier about the high school, you know what I mean, not knowing it's, it's bigger than just in Tennessee. You know what I mean? I didn't know this. Like when I got up, like you saying, you know what I mean? You were two star. Jay, I go, Jay, I go to JUCO. All of a sudden, he a five star. It was the same thing I was going through, man. Like when I my senior year, when I went to Oak Hill. I don't know what star, if I even was a star. But I knew I was cold. But I knew I was cold yeah. in Tennessee. You know what I mean? And I'm right. I'm comparing it to down there in Memphis. I'm looking at Dante. I'm looking at Mercer. I'm like, man, I, I can I can hoop. I know I can hoop. But when I get up right. on that national stage, I'm like. Damn, ain't nothing, ain't, ain't, it's kind of the same. I'm doing the same thing, you know what I mean? And how these dudes fast stars, and I see how it works. You got to get out of that right. bubble, man, but we don't know because we ain't got nobody to take us outside of it, you know what I mean? Right, so right. That, so then you're looking at it, it's the same thing in college, man. That's one of the most important decisions that you got, man. That's where you're going to go to right. school, you know what I mean, to have the opportunity. And I was big on um, kind of staying close to home, but not really. Like, I didn't go through my recruiting process, and when I tell my story, you know what I mean, um, people uh, figure out why I didn't go to Tennessee or anything, you know what I mean? But I was a huge Arkansas fan, uh, tried to take my commitment back from Tennessee to go to Kentucky. Uh, Coach Smith wouldn't let me, but, you know what I mean, I'm glad it ended up the way it did. But you never know, man, until you get out that bubble to see other things and how important these coaches are, you know what I mean? And that's another thing that I went, when I went through my recruiting process, 
I would have chose, like I love the school I chose, but I would have looked at it as who's this coach that's there and how much weight does he carry outside right. of the school itself? You know what I mean? Because them, them rela relationships are everything, man. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you don't make it nowhere without relationships and it's who you know. So you say the coaches come in, things go, um, they take a turn for it. Then walk me through what happened on your journey. So on my journey there, man, it was more like I was a hometown favorite. Yep. So coming in, you know what I mean, it was big hype around my name, which this coach don't know nothing about this, though. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's just coming in from North Carolina, where we right. came from. So, you know, the ball gets rolling, we get in camp. Kind of tweaked my ankle a little bit. The one day I broke in high school, mm -hmm. kind of tweaked, because mm -hmm. one thing I'm learning now is conditioning in college is way different than conditioning in high school, than what people don't realize. So, it don't matter how good you are, I'm learning that if you don't pass conditioning tests and things like that, you would not see the field or the court or whatever you got going on. Right. So, during that time, we on a down year, man. I'm up there with your home with Big West. You know what I'm saying? Big West was yeah. like our <laughs> dying light that year, man. Yeah. Tell the piece, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, I followed Big West from high school, him, Kenneth Gates, all this, mm -hmm. Jonah. So, I know they style of play. You know what right. I mean? They got to kill this thing like I do. So, well, it's the practice field, I, I proved that I deserve to be there. I deserve to start. But it's like, with this new coach, I didn't fit into his system of what right. he had going on. Right. You know, he could more like with a spread offense. I'm a big back. You know yep. what I mean? So they, they, they would be right there. Then, uh, believe it or not, like I tell people, man, people play who they recruit. So <laughs> you, That's you, who they, you, they, that's who they job depend on. Yeah. They, they going to play the average joke that they recruited. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. And as I got older, I understood that, but I didn't understand that at the time, man. And when I tell you, Big Ron, man, I didn't play a down, bro. My sophomore year, I didn't play not one down. And, like, one of the most frustrating things was we was playing in OBC. Mm -hmm. And let's be clear, OBC ain't the SEC, it ain't right. the ACC, you know what I mean? Right. I'm seeing people that shouldn't even be, they can't even backpedal out there. Yeah. You feel me? <clears throat> yep. So it really frustrated me to the point, man, we went two and nine. Mm -hmm. So this is what a lot of people don't know. We go two and nine, I don't touch the field, so I'm very frustrated now. I want right. to transfer. Right. So I get with Coach, uh, I talk to Coach Former and J.R., who's my partner, J.R. at their school now, like, mm -hmm. look, man, if you come up there and walk home, you can earn a scholarship, you know what right. I mean? I ain't gonna back right, but we just can't give you somebody a scholarship like this. You right. know what I'm saying? So I understood that. So, man, I go to, like, Sign up for my second semester classes after the season. Over, we go two and nine, bro. I go to the financial aid office. I ain't got no class in the system, no money on the system. Yeah. So you know we call it purge in college. Like yeah. you've been purged. Yep. Like, so I go talk this? to the coach, man. He said, "Oh man, I, and this two days before school start. Oh man, I'm gonna tell you, man, that uh, when I pulled your scholarship, I want you to earn it." So I'm like, Coach, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, man, but. I stay down the street in those projects. You know, when you get out the interstate right there, man, I can't afford to pay for school, especially not here. Yeah. So he, I think the coach just be real, man. We went two and nine. I feel like the whole team should be in there. Not somebody that just didn't play. Mm -hmm. So he, he felt like he was going to stand on his decision. So by that time, bro, I'm going to keep it real. I had lost it, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I lost love for the game. I mm -hmm. just felt like, man, maybe this ain't for me. Mm -hmm. But I went through a time in my life where, for the first time in my life, like I said, I kind of ran, bro. Like, yeah. what I mean by ran was, like, I stopped going to workouts, off-season workouts, you know what I mean? I paid, I paid my way in school that time, they deal, that semester, but I feel violated, man. Right. Nobody told me everything. Yep. It was like they wanted me to earn everything, but, like, okay, I understand it. You're talking to, like, an 18-, 19-year-old kid right. who was on a full scholarship. You take his money, and then... You leave them out there in the cold. Yeah, you, know you just want me to feed for myself. Yeah. I'm spending more time in the projects and stuff now. Like, right. like when I usually got work out, I'm more about hanging out. Yep. So I'm hanging with people that really ain't got nothing going on. Mm -hmm. I'm just calling my own feelings. And so the lady, you know, I didn't go the whole semester go by. Yeah. So now I ain't get what I'm supposed to do in the classroom to be able to transfer anywhere I need to go. So mm -hmm. it got ugly, man. So, you know, now grown man decisions take place. Right. Right, right, right. So you got the idle time, man, and idle time, it, it ain't good time all the time. You know what I mean? No. So especially when you're in an environment 
as you were, you know what I mean, as you were saying. Right. So, you know what I mean, so decisions were made, you know what I mean, you had to, you had to end up going to go do some time. Yeah, I, um, while in college, I uh, served a confidential informer, which was one of my friends, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't know he was a confidential informer. So on one of them days when I probably should have been in class or at work, I was working at Coca-Cola, I picked up a job. I was in a project, man. Came to me, man, and asked that I know anybody that had some deals, some extra mm -hmm. deals. So I knew my partner had some, but I was like kind of brushing them off, like, now I'm going to look into it. Yeah. To make a long story short, man, I do these dealings with this guy three times. First time I give him 20 extra deals, second time I give him 100 extra deals. Third time I give him 200 extra deals. Mm -hmm. The whole time, man, he's going, we wearing the wire on me. I'm not knowing what's going on. So they let me, they, this how I knew something was going on, Ron, man. And we was going up to an orange and white game. Yeah. The night before, the vice, some people probably, you know, they search, you know how they do in the neighborhood, they search everybody. We mm -hmm. used to, we don't think it's a rapper. At that time, the internet ain't around, yep. or the meet the film or nothing. Yep. So they take my new one off me, that was licensed to carry. Mm -hmm. So they take my gun off of me and say, your gun license has been revoked. So I'm thinking like, hey, I don't know why, but yeah. I ain't put too much thought into it. Maybe it's a mistake. Right. I had the diapers for those transactions that took place that they got. They just had blocked me up. Right. So I ended up going to jail, man, and it was a big store all over town, like former college football player, mm -hmm. goes to prison, uh, or goes to jail. Right. I had like a $300,000 bond. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't even know what was going on, bro. Right, right. So you get that, man. And, and right then, when they lock you up, everything comes to a screeching halt mentally and everything. What, what's, what's your thought process right then? Like, Man, my thought process is, man, I'm so used to people going to jail and getting out. I'm thinking this is going to be one of those situations, right. man. And and um, I might didn't mention that uh, during that time when we was younger, just to speed people up. Cause some people be like, how do you go from zero to a hundred? Right, right. Well, when I was young, I made a decision to join the Gangster Disciples. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When yeah. I joined the Gangster Disciples, it was a decision not for me being a follower, but with, with me surviving in my neighborhood, sometimes you gotta make decisions that you won't normally make. Right. So when I became the Gangster Disciples, it wasn't because of the, I needed a gang or anything, but it was really to keep my neighborhood enforced and Mm -hmm. And make the VS wasn't going on because right. the gang thing hit real big around the 2000s in Nashville. Yep. So I wanted my neighborhood to stay the way it was without cows just taking over the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So the decision I thought was a wise decision was really a dumb decision because of my popularity in football. Right. Negative dudes travel faster than positive dudes. So what ended up happening was the whole time I'm playing football in Hillsborough, I'm gang to the cycle. I'm right. pretty, broke the felony, whatever they want to call it at the time. But nobody cared because I was doing something positive. Right. So as soon as this jail thing come along, now I'm the leader of the gang to the side yeah. of the We're going to highlight this, man. And, and it's a big problem with these people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. So they want to shine right. a light on that. So did that, did that go into more of uh, more of your sentencing than, than anything, them, them trying to associate you with the gang? And you not, not only associate you with it, but saying you the leader of the gang. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. So, well, what what I realize is, man, is like when your reputation is for sports right. or whatever, you have to a higher standard than the average citizen. Mm -hmm. So, when they was hearing that I had all this respect for me, guys, the disciples and different gang members, they not looking at how long I lived in their community and how much people respected me for the good things that I've done. They looked at it as a negative thing. Right, right. That's tough. That's tough. So you you going through this part of your journey, and we want to get to the bounce back part, cause right. uh, you sitting here talking to us now, and it's a purpose in that. So if you right. had, if you if you if you look back on it, how do you get to this point? Because what you went to jail for was it was some bullshit. This is this is straight up. You know what I mean? So, this is so they end up they couldn't <laughs> prove it as a gang. Nonviolent and so, anything. Yeah, go ahead. Nonviolent, they couldn't prove no gangs up, so it was a law called the drug free school zone, real mm -hmm. quick. And that means any drug deal that takes place within a thousand feet of a school, your enhancement factors goes up. Mm -hmm. So for my charge, I should have got probation just for that for them pills and things like that. But since it was a school zone and I didn't cooperate, 
then I was sentenced to 17 years at 100%. Mm -hmm. First time offender, nonviolent offender, college student, but because they feel like I had influence and they feel like they couldn't turn me over, mm -hmm. they gave me 17 years at 100. So I ended up going to prison, Ron. So one thing I always hated, man, was these guys that always say that I could have been somebody. I didn't want to be that guy that yeah. like, he could have been just pros. I hated that yeah. shit. So, excuse my language, I ain't up being one of those in prison. Everybody, right. man, you should be in there up there. You should be there. You should be there. Man, I go through prison fighting my case, man. It was so much injustice that I kept fighting, bro. And I ended up doing 10 and a half years, man, yeah. before my fight was over, man. And I lost my dad while I was in there. You know what I said? My dad mm -hmm. played a big role in my life. So mm -hmm. I'm going through the mental breakdown, like, man. Out of all these times when a person goes to jail, the first time I go, I lose my dad in 11 months. Yeah. yeah. So after that, my mama developed COPD, um, and I'm uh, in prison now with, with killers, yeah. rapists, drug mm -hmm. dealers, whatever it is. So now I'm in a mix of this, so now survival mode kicks in. You know right. what I mean? Right. I'm not looking, I'm looking at it as a good guy and an athlete, but now it's like, man, people full of crap in there. So, you know. I had to do what I had to do to survive, man. I ended up fighting my case, man. I ended up getting a blessing. I was sentenced for May 16, 2008. I was supposed to get out to May 16, 2023. So while in there, I said I wanted to make a difference, man. And I started my own organization while I was in there, I was positive in the city key. Mm -hmm. So when I got out of when I got released, the federal courts came down, Ron, in October and said that basically, my, my representation for my lawyer was wrong. I shouldn't have done all this time. And Metro Nashville got 60 days to release me or come up with a decision, you know what I mean, on how they're going to do a new trial. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the district attorney, Glenn Funk, ended up uh, giving me a new plea deal. He knew uh, what I went through. So I ended up getting a new plea deal, man. So I came home Halloween, October 31st, 2018. Right. Right, so you come home, man, back integrated in society. What What was your day of release? You knew, did you know it was going to happen? Did we, did, were you sitting there like, man, hey, I man, this got to happen? in a couple of days, losing up to it, man. I was on every news channel. Man. I'm laying in a mm -hmm. in prison. I'm on every news channel, yeah. man. I'm like, man, God really done changed this, this around for me, man. Mm -hmm. I went from being known as a star football player to a gang leader, mm -hmm. and now he turned my message to a message. You feel right. what I'm saying? Right. So I can't believe it, Ron. I'm in denial, like, man. That's what I'm gonna, gonna say, cause you this you ten years, this ten years of man, can man. it change? Can I get out? And after a minute, man, a lot of people, man, even on the outside of being poor, can I get a job to get the foundation, some money under my feet where I can support a family? They give up on that. So, so for you not to give up in 10 plus years, like, dude, the mental fortitude that you got to have to do that, man, is bigger than sports, bigger than anything, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? So, so at this time, Rob, at River Bend Maximum Security. Yeah. So I'm on staff. So River Bend, we got death row with bro. So mm -hmm. during this time, bro, I come from a kid that ain't nothing in trouble. So I'm 10 years in, and I'm watching the hearses come in. They... They 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 um uh, they executing people. I'm seeing the hearses come back out. I'm like, man, what the fuck am I at? Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? yeah. So, <laughs> so I went running a football to watch his death row in my please. I'm like, yeah. That's around the time when things start changing, bro. Mm -hmm. And God really man put a blessing on my life, man. And I ended up getting out. They let me out, man. Like the judge, like they agreed. I couldn't believe it, man. Yeah. When I tell you, social media. The news, I'm mm -hmm. on every news channel, everybody page. And I'm like, this was the love I got in football. So God really had a bigger purpose. Right. Even though it took 10 years for me to realize, like, I feel like I could affect way, I didn't want to go to prison, but I feel like I affected way more lives with this real life situation than I ever could with scoring mm -hmm. touchdowns. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. So I basically put a touchdown in life so people can know, like, Regardless of what you go through, man, you might not be able to live out your dream, but you know what I mean? You might have another shot at something different. So mm -hmm. I get out one, man. I um, over all over the news and stuff, man. Fast forward, man. I have a beautiful baby girl. I the front page of the paper. Me and my daughter Treasure, man. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm working at the juvenile, man. Life good, man. The city, man, showing me so much love, man. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, man, 
I got a baby born away in a couple of months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I got my voting rights back. Um, I work with the juvenile, man, hand in hand. I got one of the best and the biggest nonprofit organizations in the city. Mm-hmm. I, I train kids in football. So, you know, I went through a lot, man, but at the same time, man, if I had to go through what I had to go through to change people from taking that same direction, whether right. it's not leaving for college or not going to class, like all the little things, the mental toughest things, decisions you make, you'll see them later on in life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, like I hated one chance, bro. We had a thing called one chance in college, yeah. bro. You had to make the time in yeah. 16 seconds. So you always say, Ron, well, you be like, what the fuck do one of 16 one chance got to do with being a good football player? You know what I'm saying? Like, you could be in shape and not get shape. So, yeah. <laughs> that discipline right there, bro, is the same discipline I took when I went to the library 110 times right. working on the case. Mm-hmm. That, Everybody feel like I didn't have no hope in you. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So I took that, like, if I can do them one ten, I know I can get up and walk down to this library. I'm talking people laugh and say, Free, what are you going to yeah. the library? Yeah. Oh, man, you tripping, man. Go and do that time. Yeah. The same dudes that called me from prison saying, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you was doing the right thing. The yeah. same way I, I, I talked to my college teammates at prison saying, hey, bro, I wish I could run a one ten right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I. I just look at life different, bro, and I take it for different. You know what I'm saying? That's real, man. That that that's real. And and listen, man, like the impact I look at it now, man. All the years I played was able to play, like you said, comparing it to um, the touchdowns you could have run. The impact that you have now, you look at it. You look back now, being older. The you want to tell these kids, man. Hey, man, slow down. Enjoy your life. Cause man, right. you you got a whole a whole lot of life to live, man. If you're healthy, you know what I mean. It's a whole like I'm coming. In, I just turned forty, you know what I mean. And I'm looking back on it. I tell people all the time, man. Me now having the opportunity to be on the radio, dude. My impact is way greater. And this, I played fourteen years pro. You know what I mean. Right. All American in Tennessee. All that like my impact way greater now than it was then when I played, man. It, you couldn't have told me that at 19, 20 years old. Like, yeah. hell yeah. no, nah. give me the pro, give me all that. But yeah. here you are, you know what I mean? Now you, now you presented with something, like you said, man, with your foundation and everything and impacting kids, man. If you had to look back on it right now and say a sacrifice that you would have made, um, what would it have been? If you, you know, because we're going to have we're gonna have people listen to it, hopefully parents, you know what I mean, let the kids listen to it. But... Um, right. If you had a sacrifice that you that you had and you could go back and do, like I know we, it ain't too much we would change, but if you could make a sacrifice, what would that sacrifice be? Man, I know exactly exactly the sacrifice I would make, man. And I, I would leave home, man. You know, like mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like even though we big athletes and things, man, we be big babies in other yeah. ways, bro. Yeah. And you know, like what I tell every kid, man, you can't, man, get on that plane, man. Mm-hmm. And go see something different, man. Because one thing I didn't do, I didn't take visits. Yeah. I didn't go to camps. Yeah. And when it came down to school, I took the easy way out and went to Tennessee State University. Right. right down the street, which was five minutes away from my house. And I know that if I would have opened that door just to see something different, mm-hmm. you know, I would have had a different outcome from what I had going on. So, mm-hmm. you know, what I tell people is, like, and my answer to your question is, what I would have sacrificed is, like, man, I sacrificed 10 years in prison, bro. And so you tell me I couldn't go four years somewhere to better myself? Yeah. Because when you're making the wrong decisions, you might well make the sacrifice to do the right thing because they're going to set you down regardless. So yep. you're going to go somewhere regardless because they're going to college. Right. There you go. So, so you know what I mean? It's just like one thing I tell kids, man, it's two things you got to sacrifice. And they're going to make you do it in prison anyway. Mm-hmm. They're going to make you go to school. They're going to make you go to work. Yeah. So why not do it out here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, on your own time. You see these dudes with these cell phones in prison, you think it's cool, but after they hang up, man, reality is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I would sacrifice, man, just the hard decisions, man. You know what I mean? To leave home for college, to do this and do that. Because guess what? Everybody's not a Ron Slate, man. You're a goat. Right. You know I mean, somebody I looked up going, going up. You know what I mean, everybody's not a big friend. You know what I mean? Yep. What I accomplished, some people are just normal people. Yep. Well, you know, you got to be your influence for them as well. And I think with the lifestyle we live in now, we touch everybody. It mm-hmm. ain't just everybody got a basketball or a football. Because yep. if I look back, 
I can't say football played a big part of my life, but if I went to college, it's, it's ways you can make NFL type money with, with careers. Yep. You know what I mean? And trades and things like that because you look at the average span of people going to the NFL or NBA, they're not standing up for a long period no, of time. No. Yeah, the superstars, the Tom Brady, the yeah. Bronze, and all that. Yep. But you look at that guy at the end of the bench or running down on the kickoff, he might be a full five hundred thousand dollar guy when he yep. retired from all yep. the sacrifice he did. So yep. No, I just try to tell people, man, regardless of your address, when I work with kids, you can be whatever you want to be in life, bro. You can be Ron Slade. That's real. You can be this person. Mm-hmm. You can be uh, uh, John Henderson. Yeah. You can say Tokyo Beard. You mm-hmm. can be all these kids, all these people. One thing they all going to tell you, man, you got to sacrifice somewhere. That's facts. That's facts. I appreciate that, Fridge, man. I appreciate you opening up for us, man, here in the Boom Boom Room, man. Yeah, uh, man, come on, man. Hey, yeah, it's an honor to have you on here, dog, man. Um, now we got to have a little fun, though, before I let you about it. You know what I mean? Right. We got to stir the pot, you know what I mean, get a little controversy going real quick. Right. Your teams at Hillsborough, rank them if you had to put them in the top five. Where would you put them? And I'm talking about teams where you know your history. You know, Brentwood right. Academy when they had Tito Lee, you know, Pearl Cone, yeah. you know, Bigger Mod and them at White's Creek, you know, the Four Horse and that Stratford. You know, I like, you know your history. Father yeah. Ryan when they yeah. had the Mondelli Brothers. NBA right. when they was in the, the late, the late 2000s, Clark Lee over at Vandy. Like, you know your history. So where you putting right. your teams in Hillsborough? Well, 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 can I say something before I do? Before I tell you something <laughs> Go ahead. Else? You can preface it. You're in the boom boom room. Take your time. Okay. Well, for my freshman class, we were freshman city champ. We never lost a home game. We lost one Metro game. We went 55 and 4. We went to three state ch- championships in a row. So for a Metro school, nobody's never went to three state championships in a row. <laughs> my big homies from Pearl, they got the 96 97. Mm-hmm. So, um, when I look at the four horsemen, that's pretty solid. They they, they did their thing with rushing yards mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. And people have gone to the next level. Mm-hmm. You got the Brentwood Academies with the Tito Lees mm-hmm. and all them. They mm-hmm. was all great, but I most definitely, man. But what we did as a dynasty, bro, 55 to 4, 3 I state championships, no on. home games. Yeah. Up. I'm putting us up there towards the top because we kept it going. Like yeah. one thing about, like this one thing I tell people about, man, I'm obsessed with Pearl 96, 97. Yeah. That was the Juco team in my yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took two teams, two, two different neighborhoods that was at odds and yep. made it great. You feel yep. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, one thing about them, they get it, well, three years too, man, because they, yeah, T- when them, when senior, senior, they got two years out of Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm a, man, look, I'm going to keep it real, man. I'm going to pay homage. I ain't studying to bring with academies and all of them. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I'm just keeping it that's right what, when we that's what I, t- I told Clark Lee that to his face. I told him the same thing. Like, yeah, 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 y'all yeah, had a great yeah, run, but no, what we did, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's different. Intro. Yeah. So I, just to be pitching in the top three, man, I respect that. Man. That's real. That's real. With, with the dynasty that we had, but I can't put myself – above people that I took from their game, man. Right. So, you know, the J, even down to J.R. Pratt's and mm-hmm. Kenneth Gates and John Henderson mm-hmm. and the T. Beers and yeah. the Fisher. Look, man, there was some legends that I took they, they recipes and put it into my recipe at yeah. Hilbert. Yeah, I love it. The Dave Scott from Glenn Cliff yeah. and stuff like that, C.J. John. So I can't take and put myself above somebody. I like Kobe putting himself above Jordan when he right. got his game from Jordan. Yeah, he was a blueprint, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know what I mean? I, I just say, as long as we being mentioned right there, but I, I ain't nobody trying to see me one on one on fourth and goals. I'm going to get out of the defense. I'm getting in there. So, yeah, yeah that's a controversy on this. Yeah. Yeah. We come down to fourth and goal. I want the ball against Curl. Yeah. The four, four, four horses ain't playing no defense anyway. They ain't playing no defense. Yeah. yeah, they just run. They ain't tackling nothing. So, uh, hey, boy. <laughs> hey, so see. See, you took my next question, so that, that that's cool. All right, that, that's perfect. So we're going to pick you as the running back. Outside of you, outside of you, who would be a running back if you start in the team? In Nashville, Davis. There it is. That's on the OB. Yeah, I ain't even got to finish the question. 
It was different. Wasn't not, it? Not, 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 not the tape of San Antonio. I'm talking about the, the murder of one San Antonio. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Not the little fade or Mr. T or none of that. Just, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, man, murder of one. <laughs> yeah, that's real. All right, okay. So, all right, that, that's that's a, uh, football. What you see going on in the city right now, you know what I mean, as far as basketball bubbling and how it is, man. You know your history in this also. Um, right. How special do you think um, what what Brian Collins, Lil Penny is building over there at TSU? How, how special do you think that they, they, they could be? I think I think it could be I think it could be great. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it, it, it takes like it takes the stuff that people don't see to make you great. Right. right now, you know, it's being on social media. You know, you got Master P there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, it's set up for everything to go right. But it's what they doing right now yeah. as we speak at six o'clock a.m. Mm-hmm. in the morning. They develop champions, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and do they take it personal? Do they want to be a household name, or they want to be something that TSU can be proud of, and the city can be proud right. of? Because it can go either way now. Right, right. But you know, it, it's the sacrifice that they make that's gonna make them great. But I think Penny in a great position. Mm-hmm. And honestly, man, I'm be I can say this because I ain't, yeah, man. What he had last year was job. Some of them players out yeah. there didn't look like they' supposed to be on the college level. I'm glad he really got the opportunity to get some talent. And see what he can do with a lot of talent, you know what I mean, and put the pieces of the puzzle together. But we see basketball is a tight sport, but we just seen that Brooklyn didn't make it, so Le- did. LeBron them didn't make it, yep. so they're going to earn their way now. You, you gotta know, have things go awesome. right. You can't win on paper now. No, you gotta have things go right, man. No doubt, no doubt about it. So what do you, let, let me ask you this too. What do you think about the city as far as developing talent and um you know what I mean in football and basketball? You think we 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 right there on the up and up or you think it's you know, kind of leveling off or, or what? It's decreasing most definitely mm-hmm. on the high school level. I mean, like, if you look at high school sports and metro sports in particular, yeah. like, we got teams that don't even want to have programs. Like, mm-hmm. at least when we play, everybody was, they going to come at you. you know I mean, yeah. when they play against Pearl and basketball, everybody played good. Right. It, y'all made them look bad. Right. So it's just like, now, man, these kids, man, it's like they more in the hallways and more on the internet than they are just really perfecting their craft, you mm-hmm. know, outside of the ones that that really take it serious, man. Right. I just feel like the Metro as sports here, yeah, that's definitely decreasing, man. And you know, a lot of people don't want to send their kids to, to regular Metro schools anymore. So you, know, you see in the routes of different private schools and that like that. But I just feel like it's different now, man. Yeah. You know I mean, they got a lot of exposure. Like if the kid is doing right now, we don't have to take the route Ron, Ron, uh, Ron Slate took, mm-hmm. or Ron Mercer took. Right. Now, and the internet, you got to one of these camps and, and boom, good, man. Yep. Got to play. So I feel like they got the resources to be what they need to be, but talent wise and it's competitive, they they not what they used to be. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I'm gonna post it at the end of this uh, interview, but I'm going to tell the people, man, how they can get in touch, how they can help out with Pick Foundation, um, and, and and what you got, what you got coming up. Coming up the pipe, you know. What I mean, salute on 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 the baby boy on the way. You know what I mean. And I appreciate it, man. Yeah, special thanks to Ramon Foster, man. He yep. Yeah. Keep this uh, organization off, man, with a uh, donation uh, from his from him from the Pittsburgh Steelers, man. And uh, the name of my organization is Positive Inner City Kids. Right. And uh, you can reach me at uh, One Team Fridge on Instagram, Calvin Fridge Brian on Facebook. Um, we accept all donations, man. Um, just uh, get at me on any of my social sites, and I lead you in the right direction to donate that to is. the organization. That is, I appreciate you, Freeze, man. You coming in the boom boom room? You are released. You can get out man, of the boom boom room. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Finally free again. <laughs> I got released again, man. Hey, man. Crazy, man. <laughs> hey, and what I don't want to be overshadowed. I, I don't know if um, we we you talked about it a little bit. You studying the law and everything, but you were able to reverse. The right, same law that locked you up. Okay, with the drug free school zone, I was able to talk to legislation and uh, push a move with a uh, with an organization out of Washington D.C. called Families Against Mandatory Minimums. So now they can't get a guy in the in certain neighborhoods, basically, and charge him with a school zone if the school is not open, if it's not mm-hmm. functioning, and the judge got the right to make sure this is not a Calvin Bryant situation. So we reached a milestone on that. that so they basically time. changed the law. You know what I mean? I have changed the law that took my took my life away from me. That's so, you know, time. I feel like that's good. That's salute, man. Well, hey, man, make sure you send, send, send love to wifey, man. Get that baby boy right. here. And salute the treasure. If y'all listeners out there, 
Man, we're going to make Correct. Bridge get treasure her own YouTube channel she need. And your little nephew. Your little <laughs> nephew cold, too. You know what I mean? So, hey, right, man, be on the lookout. We appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, big bro. No Love doubt. Yep. Yeah.